is going to play, let's see. later today against Newark and well so far I think that they can win that game so probably Rix is going to be uh, the, the first in the, this group okay they we start the game and um, we are already at the Firenze basket uh, and the mm, Italians are trying to defense but the attacker got behind the defender now we have three Italians trying to uh, get the ball, they got it, great, they was trying to see me well, but I got, got uh, um, hold by um, all the player, but nevertheless the, the Italians are still in ball position and they're trying to get out of their half of the field without the tech so far, so, so far uh, Mole doesn't give really, um, doesn't <laughs> give them the space to swim um, without uh, holding them and uh, for taking so now we're still above the Italian basket we still have plenty of blue uh, players underwater defending and uh, also plenty of molded just underneath and that was a goal from the open side uh, the attacker got the ball and could just push the back of the goalie and the first goal but it took um, one and a half minute to score the first goal I needed milk and sugar. Uh. <laughs> I go for it. <laughs> I brought you coffee, Lorena. Yeah, sugar, sugar, sugar. Yeah, sugar is already in. There okay. is uh, no milk. You want milk? All right, I bring you milk. <laughs> okay, we continue with the game. Um, Italy just passed uh, the well, try to go over the half, but uh, got stopped by Molde. Now they're under their goalie, back again, and they're going to be an attack from above. And that was a goal from above, from number 29, I believe. Let me hear from Molde. Goal, white team, number 29. Yeah, correct. Uh, number 29 of Molde is Christian Schaeffer. Okay. Christian Schaeffer has been scoring yesterday, plenty of goals as well. <laughs> and here we come again, Molde attackers. Uh, they just uh, dropped the ball, and the goalie from Italy almost got it, but then the attacker was faster, recover, and just push the goalie away. And we have another Goal score. Goal by team number four. Number four from Norway. This is. B Björneren even or something like this. 3-0 and we still have 17 minutes to go. Okay, uh, Oscar, thank you for calling us some people. You can call us by our name. I'm Wolf and this is Lorena and we need a history lesson. Well, okay. Uh, Rugby was brought uh, uh, to Australia by Colombians. I heard another story. There are many stories in the world, but uh, thank you for the history lesson. Um, well, exactly because of things like that, we want to create a platform with the academy. So even the history of the rugby in each country, the technique, the tactic, the development, this does not... Ha because otherwise we are like in the Middle Ages when, you know, okay, Let's well, go back in we the game. We I continue with my, <laughs> with my story so, later. Uh, <laughs> like expected, Firenze is under heavy uh, attack by uh, the Molde players. And uh, it seems they don't have any trouble um, controlling the situation as expected. And here we are on the open side, pushing on the goalkeeper. But they didn't succeed. We see that a lot in this Champions Cup, not only by Molde, but the the success rate by an, uh, with an attack is not 100%. And normally you have these top teams, um, you, you wouldn't think they don't uh, put the ball in the basket. And we have even a counter-attack from Firenze now, and a fast counter-attack back from uh, Molde to the basket. And I was surprised, I didn't see what happened there, but uh, the, the attack stopped and the Firenze player uh, succeeded in uh, snatching the ball away and here it is the goal goal by team number 15 number 15 from Molde this is Marius 
Schiere. So Italy is trying to pass the half of the field, but they are not really success. I don't think. Did they arrive to the Molde goal? No, they oh, didn't. Yes. They didn't make it over the half. And here's another attack by Molde. And, and Molde, they, they are looking. They're, they're playing a little bit rough. Yes, they are. The, they they it, it seems like they want to score uh, whatever it takes. And it's not the, the style we normally see from them. It's uh, more, it's easier normally we see them playing. And this is with a lot of physical force. Yeah, and it shouldn't be because they don't, I don't think Goal they need this kind. by team number two. Number two, this is Jakob Larhammer. I think, you know, against Italy, they are clearly the stronger team. They could try to play Well, let's say, uh, let's say it's not, yeah, it's not a, 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 a beauty game to watch. No, it, I mean, it hurts. I see it and it hurts. Blue no. free throw <laughs> holding. So it's a free throw for Firenze. Um, Norway was holding a Firenze player without ball. And uh, we have... Uh, Firenze succeeded in executing their uh, free throw. But they, see they don't pass. It's like the Molde, you know, uh, decided that Firenze is not going to make it over the half because they're stopping every. Well, now they pass a little bit, but now they're recovering and having a counterattack. And who is Celine? And here we go. It's going fast uh, on the Italian basket, came. and the pass to the other side, to the open side, but the ball didn't went through, and uh, Italy does uh, does quite well in interrupting what Molde does here. Yeah, it's a 5-0, I, I know, and we have uh, just seven, three minutes left. And another game, yes, they will score, that's quite sure. It's but like the, all the frustration from the game against Big Sue. Team number 14. Yeah, true, true. It's, it, looks a little bit 14. it looks a little bit overkill. This was um, Hakon Becklehau. Okay, Carlos, uh, from coach to coach, I congratulate you to be uh, uh, her coach. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for the history lesson. Yeah, we will put I that. But I, know, I, I don't know where Celine Steinfeld came from. Is it German? It looks like a German name. Well, he said it came from Colombia, so she must no, be no, Colombian. No. They said that Celine was the person who started in the Colombia's help, but Celine Steinfeld, it, it looks like could be a German woman. So. Who is the link? Can you uh, elaborate. Tell, elaborate a little bit more, uh, some information about the link, so Carlos? Thank you so let's much. Let's say in the game. Okay, oh, the there, game. The, the, the goalkeeper is a little bit holding on to the basket. No, that looks like when no, you he put your well. head. And again, <laughs> 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 and again, uh, Italy Italian and me, no is, is going back. It's, it's interesting. We see little gaps, little holes for the Italian team to establish their own uh, game. And that's surprising because uh, um, from what we know from Molde, what we've seen from Molde, um, this shouldn't be possible. And we're even going now to the uh, yeah, Norwegian Molde basket. Half, yeah. And one Italian made it even under the goalie. But two Norwegians are almost tearing apart the number 17 of the Italian. And now they recover. It's, it's, it, I don't know. I mean, why didn't they bring this kind? It didn't look like that against Rixur yesterday, or am I remembering wrong? Who? It's Italy. Molde. No, no, the kind of... The, they, they Whoa, that was uh, forceful. Yeah, but I think that's, that's uh, probably what they talked about. They, they are lacking in the, mo in the game against uh, Rixu. Number 15. Number 15. Probably Molde. they were this lacking. Marius, yeah. I don't know, it's like they're playing a bit more fearful than yesterday, Molde. Or this is probably, I don't know. It's like they couldn't do this game against the, the Finnish team yesterday. And while, of, of course, Italy it is a weaker team. And Okay, um 30 seconds left in this first half here of Firenze against the Molde. We have 115. 16. Watching. 16 watching. And Molde is uh, in the corner, in the close side, fending off uh, on a uh, four checking attack from uh, Firenze. And now uh, the player from Molde comes in. 
on the close side, but Firenze uh, succeeds in snatching away the ball and is going on a counter attack and uh, already on the half, and that's it, end of the first half. The first half. Side change. Okay, I guess uh, the talking now in the live chat is made uh, is uh, thought to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have to explain this. Sometimes in underwater rugby we use a rough language, but we uh, don't mean it that way. So it's uh, meant with love if we tell each other to beep off and to beep and whatever. So love and peace to Australia. So can I continue my story that you cut me off? Yes, I said please. We, the platform we are trying to establish with the um, UVR Academy that we started on Thursday, uh, is um, that there was the first uh, step uh, to come together and talk um, and, and see which ideas and things, uh, knowledge to exchange, but also to um, establish a virtual platform that it could be of access of every person that wants to play rugby around the world and want to know about the sport. So things like this you can see is important. So we can also follow the development of the sport, the history of the sport in this country, the person that made it relevant. I know that the Colombians have brought uh, the uh, sport, I believe, to the US, um, I believe also to Spain. The Germans brought it to Italy and to Colombia. And uh, so, you know, it spread like that. It would be so nice to have, a, you know, a bit of the history of any before, because all of this is uh, still quite contemporary. I mean, this, this, this sport was created 50 years ago by the Germans, and we still have the people that created it to tell us in all of the countries. But in a few years, uh, we'll the future plane, um, Eventually, people die too, and the knowledge that went in. So, wha and that's wha what we could do, Carlos, uh, if you're uh, still listening, um, what we did for uh, from the beginning, from the Underwater Rugby Academy, we wrote down the history of the academy, uh, write down the history of your club, uh, how it came into being, and uh, share this knowledge with us. And if we have this, these stories from every club in the world, we have a chronology of uh, the, uh, the histories of the development of the clubs. And that will be uh, for, for future commentaries, something to refer to. And that would be really nice. So yeah, sit down, write it down, send it to us. And uh, that will be another section in the Underwater Rugby uh, Academy. Not only knowledge about tactics and coaching, but also history of the clubs. Very good idea. Go for it. So, uh, Molde players. We see the Molde players here now on the exchange uh, uh, chairs. And uh, they seem to be quite happy. This is Tarkan walking Ten through seconds. the picture. Coach, head coach of the Turkish players. From Ege, 10 seconds, 3 seconds. Teams get ready, six and in the water. Italy will surely put another Mamma Mia in the water before they start. And here we go, Molde is on the ball. They do a fast forward checking uh, into direction of the Italian basket. And there's already a Molde player lying on the Italian basket. And here we go, and that is the first goal. And it took them 18 seconds. I think that's the record team, in, the, in the game so far here in the Champions Cup 2017 in Berlin. Um, 18 seconds for the first goal. And we go again. Uh, Italy is trying to swim through and the goal ca uh, ball carrier is already attacked by uh, a Mulder player fast force checking and we are at the Italian basket coming from the close side and uh, the goalkeeper tried to to switch between uh, in front of the basket defending Goal on the basket team, going on three. top of the basket and it took them a little bit too long and the player from the close side succeeded in pushing the ball in the goal And 9-0 uh, now for Molde. And Italy is trying to break at least to touch the Norwegian basket, but stopped three meters in front of the Molde uh, area, basket area, and Molde is going in again relentlessly, coming from the close side, one waiting on the open side. And uh, 
ball is above the basket and again on the close side pushing 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 with the ball here um, but the molder player does not have a, a colleague waiting for him to be uh, uh, to pass to so this takes uh, surprisingly long in this attack for them to score very well done by the Italians Again, still a very nice defense work by the Italians. Now again, an attack from the close side. And now even an Italian is snatching a ball away from the Molde. And they're going on a counter attack. And uh, the, Mo the, the Italian player is three meters. They go forward two meters. And they're at the Norwegian basket. And there's an Italian player uh, attacking the Norwegian uh, uh, goalkeeper and that's a fall play because it was a grip to the bar to the uh, mask to the equipment and it's a free throw for Italy in Blue front of the um, in front of the Norwegian basket attacking the equipment it was a grip to the mask uh, very well done by Italy here and uh, surprising after what they had uh, taken as a beating uh, what they can put in the water is a counter-attack by Norway and they go in really fast but didn't succeed on putting it on the empty basket but the second player put it in so that's what we 15. know from Norway you attack them and they uh, counter-attack really fast out, as, long as, you're out, as long as you're still uh, at the basket they counter-attack and you swim behind them that was uh, a uh, classical Molde move. So timeout for uh, Firenze. And they are really, uh, they can be, uh, well, let's say, don't say it's happy with the game, but they put an, uh, quite an effort into the water to show Molde it's not the easiest game for them it's not like they are swimming through water, they are swimming through Firenze. Ten seconds. Okay, four seconds left. Six and a half minutes. So back in the game, sorry, we had to uh, discuss a little bit and uh, Molde is attacking, not a surprise here. On the close side again, coming in over the head and the pass to the uh, open side, but the ball was lost. It was uh, kicked away by a Firenze player and another score. It's a uh, 10-0 and we have five minutes left. Uh -huh. And it looks like Molde tries to uh, team, go into lead in uh, it I it is a the a most goals. A tough uh, a tough Champions Cup for the Italians. It's the third game yes. uh, that they lose. Uh, and it's still early in the morning and they didn't have a proper espresso here in Germany. Well, there was a uh, very well snatched away ball by a Molde player in the, in the offense strategy, into the offense strategy of uh, Firenze. And they are now attacking relentlessly on the Italian basket from the front. And uh, it looks like there are more Molde players now um, around the basket than uh, uh, Firenze players. It's a tough game for a tough game for the Italian team. Yes, I mean yesterday they lost against uh, Rixu and Newark and today Molde was a, also a tough group. Huh? The group A with Molde, Rixu, Firenze and Newark. Um, they cannot really they just barely make it out of their of their half and uh, Molde is really coming with everything they have. I mean it's really physical game and uh, I'm surprised that they are playing this hard because against a team like Firenze, mm, 
I well, think if probably they need, I mean, I know that you play with everything you have, but I don't know. They probably that's a beat they want to establish now for themselves because they will go into heavier games yeah, further on than the loss against Rixu, so they have to beef up uh, in this moment and be as much aggressive in, into the game. But that was a, an uh, empty pass to an uh, Italian player. Uh, surprise, uh, normally you don't see this happening here with the Norwegian team. Um, four minutes left, and it's 11-0, and we have a, a cluster on the surface. Call from the referee, looks like the uh, deck referee. Blue free throw, holding. Okay, free throw for Italy. Blue free throw, holding. I'm trying. Uh, free throw for Italy. We it's a little. T shirts made by Wasabro. And I'm trying to make a picture for that. Yeah. I know. While watching the game. They cannot while see you. Relating. Of course. I mean, it's. Okay, free throw. Let's see how far they can execute. And uh, they don't even make it over the half, uh, the Italians, and uh, are interrupted by Molde. And they're now above the Italian basket. And uh, Molde player is waiting above the goalkeeper. And we have a cluster on the surface. The ball is not free. That's a dangerous situation again for Italy. And here we go. Uh, three Molde players coming down on uh, the goalkeeper and the ball carrier. Just push the ball uh, on the side of the head, uh, on the shoulder, into the basket four. without even moving the goalkeeper. So it's 12-0 uh, and uh, three and a half, two and a half minutes left. It's getting tougher and tougher for Italy because it's demanding what they do here. And uh, Molde for sure has the, the physical condition to go through the length with all that force without doing a sweat. And again, the basket is occupied by Molde and we have a call from the referee on the uh, open side. Holding blue free throw. And it was a holding, holding from uh, Molde and a free throw again for Italy. Two meter, two meter, three seconds, two meter, three seconds. So the referee is calling one of the model players back away from uh, the executing uh, three throw executing Italian and uh, instantly the Italians are under attack and the ball keeper has to defend fight for uh, fight for the ball. The four chicken of Molde is really uh, tough. Impressive. It's like a wall. I mean the Italians they hit the wall every time they get to the middle of the pool. So uh, the referees we have in the water is Birgit Lütke and Kaiser Lindmann and the deck referee is uh, Robert Clock. I have some of the bumbers. One minute! Team arriving, one minute to go. The goal is trying to fight against two uh, and uh, the defender is helping but they still have two molded players and they make it just they create such a, a force and a chaos that it's impossible. Of so course, I mean, they have so much strength. It's so impossible it's a to stop them. It's a 13-0 now. There we have Federico looking happy after the game. <laughs> okay, 20 seconds left. Is it possible for uh, Mole to uh, put the high score uh, in this Champions Cup so far with a 14-0? Um, now, right now, we have a 13-0 Karen against uh, Wien, female, and with a man, it's a 12-0 from Orcas against the Perth Riders, male. So one second, 13-0. Uh, yeah, they have the high score for the man so far against the team. Looked like uh, Molde was uh, was more aggressive in this game and 13-0? Uh, 13-0, yes, exactly. 